As home embroiderers, we like to be able to see a design in actual thread colors before stitching it. I'm Lindy Goodall, and in this video, we'll learn about coloring designs. In this new blank document, you can see that we have a color toolbar down here at the bottom, and it has 15 predefined colors, all ready to use. If I hover over a color swatch, you can see that it pops up, and it has a color name, and this happens to be the hatch default colors. Think of this toolbox down here at the bottom as your crayon box. And we have a starter set of colors that we can exchange for other colors if we don't use these. Or, in Hatch, we'll be actually swapping these for an actual thread color by brand and thread number. Now if I create a new object, I'll just create a circle here, you can see that it's using color number one. And that's because the color over here in the current color swatch box is that color. Also notice that now that color has a little blue tag in the upper right hand corner and that's because it's used. None of the other ones are used. If I want to change that color, I'll click on the object to select it and then I'll click a new color swatch. And now we have a turquoise circle. But notice that my current color is still green. That means that if I create another circle, it's going to be green because that's the currently selected color. Now, I could change this the same way or I can set my new current color with a different swatch. So to do that, I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool, which is the color picker tool. I could click on anything up here or I can click on a color swatch. So let's click the picker and I'll pick color number six. Now color number six is in the current color well, and anything I create is going to be that color. So there's another way we can set color, and it's with the paint bucket. So I'm going to click on the paint bucket. Notice that we have a prompt. We also had one with the color picker when I had that selected. But I'm going to pick a color, and I can just pour it onto my objects. Now the color picker tool Let's undo that. I don't have to just pick a swatch from down here. I can pick a swatch from here. And now I can pour that color. So that's how you can work with the color tools and all the color swatches. Now that you know some basics about applying color, let's do something more realistic. We often color designs either to suit a particular color scheme or because we use a different thread brand than the designer listed. This technique works whether you're using a machine file or an object file. On this fancy shell design from the included Hatch library, you can see that it has only five colors. And each one is tagged with a little blue square, meaning they're used. So this one has no unused colors. There are three places in Hatch where we can work with colors. We have the Design Colors toolbar. We have the Colors tab. Let's close our Object Properties and I'll open the Sequence Docker and switch to the Colors tab. We'll make that smaller. Here you can see all the colors used in my design. The third place where we can work with colors is on the Threads Docker. And if I want to open that up so I can see more information, I'll just click on Show Details. Notice that the colors on the Design Colors toolbar are a different order than we have in our color sequence here doesn't matter what order they are down here. This is just the order that we've added them, and this is the order that they will sew in our design. We can see that each color is used once, except this orange, which is used twice. If I want to see all the places where the orange is used, I'll make sure nothing is selected on the screen. I'll click and hold on the color swatch, and now I can see where that particular color is used in the design. And you may notice some stitches, some travel stitches, connectors, that are connecting different pieces that don't show on the top because they're sneaking under that gray. That's a good thing to do. Now, if I hover over color swatch, we can see that these colors are all assigned to Madeira Classic threads. When designing colors, I like to have my threads docker expanded so I can see what threads I have available. Now, if you'll notice, here we have iSupport. 
That's because currently the default thread library is set to isochord. So if I change a color, it's going to change it to isochord. If I want to make sure that I only have Madeira colors up here, I'm going to click on Select Thread Charts. And here I have a list of all the thread color charts that are in Hatch. And there are a lot of them. So I'm going to select Isochord 40. I'm going to move it out. And I'm going to select Madeira Classic and move it in and click OK. And I want you to watch over here on the Threads Library how it will change. And now we have all Madeira colors. Now if I add any new colors or I change any of my thread colors down here to a different thread color, it will still be in Madeira. Let's say that I want to change color number five. Make sure it's selected down here on the Colors toolbar. And then I'll pick a different color. Maybe Pumpkin Spice. Double click it and now we have a new color there. Notice that when I change this swatch, both of these swatches change. If I only wanted to change one of these colors, I need to select it over here and then I can pick a different color. And when I pick that swatch and apply a new color, notice that I've added that color to my color swatch. I can search by color name. I can search by color number. So one more cool thing I'd like to show you before we wrap this video. I've colored this for Madeira, but suppose you have some other brand. Wouldn't it be nice to have this automatically mapped to your other thread brand? I'm going to go back to the thread charts and find a different brand. For example, I sometimes use Hemingworth. So I'll click Hemingworth, put that in the list, click OK. By the way, you can have multiple lists over here. So if you used Isochord and Hemingworth and Madeira, you could have all of them here and it would pick the closest match. I'll click OK. Now we have all the colors here, but I haven't mapped them yet, so there's still Madeira. And now I'm going to click on Match All Design Colors. And now when I go back here, you can see that they're now Hemingworth. So this has changed to Carrot, and this has changed to Marigold Hemingworth. When you do that, colors will shift slightly because there aren't exact matches across thread brands. This design, it's not going to be a big deal, but I've done this on animals, and sometimes it just didn't quite match up. So always check. Always test your designs when you change thread colors. There are still more tools for working with colors. For example, sometimes you'll duplicate your design and end up with twice the number of colors, or maybe even more depending on how many times you duplicate. So see the video called Optimize Colors for ways you can work with this situation.